Disclaimer, the following video has been marked as not made for kids, and as a result may contain some of the following. Viewer discretion is advised. And now that we have all that out of the way, let's pack it up, pack it in, and let this crap begin. <laughs> Enjoy, you guys. Take care. Bye. Aisetsu, my fellow Salotus, it is I, Chaos, and welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, the trilogy. Now, Ace Attorney is a series I've never, ever played until now. But I've got to be honest, I've always found it very interesting. Uh, the whole concept of it being a sort of puzzle game that takes part in a, in a courtroom, for example. Um, I've always liked how that kind of idea translates, and from seeing some of the gameplay, it looks like it translates really well. Not to mention, I just kind of like Phoenix Wright as a character. He's really grown on me over the last few years, and seeing him in places like Marvel vs. Capcom 3, for example, as an actual playable character was really cool, and kind of makes me hope that if there's another Capcom character in the Fighter's Pass for Smash Ultimate, it might be him. If they can make it work. I mean, they've given characters like Pac-Man a moveset, and Duck Hunt. I I don't see how they can't give Phoenix Wright a moveset, I'm pretty sure the guys can do it. Anyway, yeah, today we're going to be playing the game, because um, I've been interested in it. So here we go. Might also be taking the place of my current Let's Play, because as much as I've enjoyed Sword and Sandal Spartacus for its art style and stuff, I don't know, I just find the game always very hard to jump into, and a bit samey in some areas, but maybe I'm just not playing into it far enough. We'll have to see. Alright, so, oh, so these are the... Okay, so that's the three games. We'll start with the first one, then. We'll start with the regular Ace Attorney. Episode 1, the first turnabout. Okay. Now, I think the um, the trilogy has all 13 episodes made up of all the games. So that's what we got. And then that's uh, it's a, a statue dipped in juice, <laughs> I guess. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. Oh god, the resolution is really nice. I've I've got to find someone to put the blame on, I guess. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. Did that work out? August third, uh, nine forty-seven a.m. District Court, uh, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number Two. Oh boy, am I nervous. Right! Oh, uh, hi, hi, Chief. Ooh, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks? Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before the case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. My goddamn dog is barking again. Jesus, he's been doing that all day today. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just... I really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life. Everything. It's all over. Oh, I think it's this, this is the client, I guess. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. D Death, despair, oh! I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die! <laughs> Sounds like he wants to die. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! I tell them I'm guilty! You did that sentence, I ain't afraid to die! What, what? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over! I- I'm finished! Finished! I can't live in the world without her! I can't! Who- Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me who took my baby away. Hmm, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you. I can't tell that, can I? You did it, you killed him. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy that arrested, uh, the guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. 
He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's unusually not his fault. Oh, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I own one, uh, which is why I took the case. To clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do! Alright. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number two! Still! Jesus, I'm gonna speak now. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Lally Potts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, uh, defense is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm, uh, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge for your client's safe sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. <sighs> Hands shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Uh. Oh, Christ. Uh, I'm the defendant, I think. Uh, the defendant? Is me, right? Right! Oh, but no, I am wrong. Right, have you completely lost your mind? Focus! The defendant is the person on tri- Oh, okay, so it's Larry. Whoops. You're his lawyer! Um, <laughs> eh? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> this is no laughing matter. You did pass the bar, didn't you? Sorry, I couldn't hear your answer. I'll ask once more. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. <laughs> Me! Nah, okay, Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me what's the victim's name? Whew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait. Uh-oh. No. No way. I, I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name. Oh, the victim. Uh, of, of course I know the victim's name. I, uh, just forgot. <laughs> Temporarily. I think I feel a mind grain coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it at any time, okay? Well, it's, uh, RB, actually, today, because I'm using a controller like a posh person. Uh, Cindy. C Cindy Autopsy is her name. Okay. I'm gonna check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Uh, it's, oh wait, is it not Cindy? Oh, okay, so it's Cindy, Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... Um... Cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma. So she was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You have answered all my questions. I say no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. I mean, I got the freaking defendant wrong. Like, I'm part of the defense, but I guess I'm not the defendant, because the guy trying to get himself out of the pickle, lying about. Anyway. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, your honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? Uh, the murder weapon was the statue of the Finker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Statue in the shape of the finger. It's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use... Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. Uh, the prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Uh, Chief, what do I do now? 
Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Now he gets excited easily. This could be bad. He's just gonna go ahead and, like, admit everything wrong. Ahem. <coughs> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Antony! Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumb, she just wasn't taking my phone calls! Or seeing me! Ever. I feel like I've changed Butts' accent. Anyway, we'll go with this. What's it to you, anyway? Uh, Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it! Lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court. The uh, victim apparently arrived in home from Paris on the 30th of July, day before the murder. Okay. Hmm. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Uh, dude, no way. Uh, the victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddy? I've actually completely forgotten his accent. Daddies? Sugar? Uh, yes, old men who give her money in gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude, we can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Ooh. <laughs> Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? I think that's it. That cheating she-dog! I'm gonna die! I'm just gonna drop dead! Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused's motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Uh, next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? <laughs> well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, <laughs> and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went. What do I do? Um, I'll have him answer honestly, I think. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was there. I went. Order! Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. <laughs> she wasn't home, man. Like, so like, I didn't see her. Oh, Christ. Uh, Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body, just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Uh-oh, that's getting serious. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Uh, yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sauer to the stand. <laughs> so wait. Uh, yeah, I've seen how the game is like very punny with its names, and uh, that is a perfect example, and I'm very much in love with it. Uh, it's this little jerk wad. Uh, Mr. Sart, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sart, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness testimony. Uh oh, hang on a minute. Uh, oh no, I was about to do the nerdy voice again. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. 
Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving. Dead! I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Okay. Oh, pardon me. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. And the phone that Mr. Sar used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Perusal? Perusal? Well, perusal, there you go. Blackout record added to the court record. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. From noon to 6 p.m. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor. All right, right, this is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lie? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? And that witness must have lied in this testimony. I I'm trying to go for a frigging sword. I keep getting mixed up with these accents, damn it. Or is your client really guilty? <gasps> How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, when she found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, uh, okay. Open the court record with tab, then point out contradictions in the testimony. Okay, so now we gotta compare what he said to what the evidence says, I guess. Uh, I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man playing in an apartment. But he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. I saw her lying there, a woman not moving dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. Fought to call the police immediately. I remember the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to my park and found a public phone. Remember the time exactly? It was 1 p.m. Uh. Oh, Jesus. 1 p.m.? Are you certain? I I'm pretty sure the, the time of death was different. Yes, absolutely. Hmm. He seems really confident. 1 p.m.? Right. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. How do I... Oh, hang on. Oh, so I, if... I guess LB makes me uh, talk about it to him, and then I guess RB is when I get evidence out? Let me take a look. Time of death, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. So, yeah, she was found much later. That's when she died. So he found her earlier, technically. All right, let's present. Objection! <laughs> you found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, <laughs> oh, uh. oh, God. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sort, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, I, uh, well, I, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Put out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. All right. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Oh god, the time of discovery. He's going for like 20 minutes on this already. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. 
It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was there three hours. But it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Uh, right. Hmm. I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Okay. So, I'm immediately cautious of... I think... Hang on. So, when I found a body, I heard the time... I don't think it's that. Coming from the television. Wasn't there... Hang on a minute. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. But incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right. I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. Uh, the witness has testified. He heard the time. Um, let me check the evidence. I think there's, there's gotta be, oh, hang on, my controller's just died. <laughs> hang on. Uh, from the television. Let's see. The blackout record. Uh, it was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Meaning, when he supposedly found him at 1 p.m., the TV shouldn't have been working. All right, I'm gonna do this one. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Oh, I, well, oh. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sort? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Oh, wait, I remember now. Mr. Sorrett, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. Well, my apologies, Your Honor. It must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sorrett. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Okay. Hearing the time. Let's take a look. Actually, actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Oh, wait, it's a statue though, isn't it? You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Okay, I'm immediately suspect about this clock he's on about, because it's not... That wasn't a weapon, was it? Oh, music picking up now. Uh, there's a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? The murder weapon, the killer used it to hit the victim. I'm gonna cross the camera on this. The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Something's fishy here. Yep. Oh, hang on, no, no, no. Oh, Jesus. Why didn't you tell us that in the first place? I guess I just slipped my mind. I'm not really sure how it happened to myself. Uh, the witness says he saw the table clock. End of story. Now, find the contradiction. Can I only do this so much? I wonder. Uh, anyway, so... Let's see. Murder weapon used to hit the victim. Uh, let's see. This was the murder weapon, and it was a statue, not a clock, which means he is bloody lying. Let's object with the murder weapon. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was the statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Oh, it got the, um, the, uh, cornered music playing. You, you, your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Uh, Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. 
Uh, my apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? Oh, I don't know. So, we know it's we know it's a clock now, we know that, but what about saying the time? Did it do that still? I don't know. I guess I'm gonna say no. I guess not. There was a clock on the scene, so no problem. Right! Are you out of your mind? That clock doesn't look like a clock at all! I mean, this couldn't have possibly known it was a clock just by seeing it. He said himself. He never entered the apartment. It was in his testimony. Hey, you're right. Is something the matter? Does the defense have anything to add? Yes. Yes, I do. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm. Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh uh, yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Ooh, nice picking up. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Follow me. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sorrett, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Uh, what's the meaning of this? Uh, this is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Uh, eh. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that, that day, I, I never. Look, I, the clock. I heard, no, I mean, I saw, uh, uh, Oh, he's wearing a wig. He threw it right in my face. Shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! I, it was him, I tell you! I saw him! He, he killed her, and he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Oh, boy. Order, order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright? Your Honor, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Y Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sorrett heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock. Oh, guys, what's the bar on the top right? Is that my credibility or something? If you ask the neighbors. I'm going to say try sound the clock. Let's sound the clock now. Here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time! Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 1125. Ugh! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between Mr. what Mr. Sorrett heard and the actual time of death. <laughs> so, Mr. Sorrett! No, oh, hang on. So, Mr. Sorrett, try to talk your way out of this one. <sighs> you forgot one thing! Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? Well, it may seem like the clock is running three hours- Well, it's running three hours slow. It proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! He's right. How am I gonna prove that? Damn it, I was so close! Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness, unfortunately. This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sart. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens! You treat me like a criminal! A criminal! You lawyers are all slime! <clears throat> I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can... 
do about it now? Not so fast, Mr. Sorret. Maya? I mean, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts, assuming the clock was three hours slow, and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, and you'll have your proof. Right? Right? Right, right. <laughs> Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Uh, yes. I guess. Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Oh, tough words! Let's see you pull this one off! Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Um... Okay, so that's my badge. Uh, that's the, the death record, we don't need that. Got the murder weapon. Passport. A victim apparently arrived home from Paris on the 30th of July, day before the murder, and the blackout. I think the passport's the only thing I could, like, use that I haven't already used. Wait, time zones. Paris is six hours ahead of Washington, D.C., USA. Okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe it might not be that. Unless, unless we're not there, I don't know. Regardless, I think this might be the only bit of evidence I could use, so hang on, I'm gonna present the passport. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4pm here, it's 1am the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Wait, did they actually get it? Hang on. I could have sworn it said 8 hours on here. Oh no, 6 hours, didn't it? Maybe it's just like a different part. I don't know. I don't know, okay? Time zones are weird, even for myself. Proof enough for you, Mr. Saw It? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? <gasps> oh. Oh, oh god, he's frothing from the mouth. Ugh. Oh, he might be dead. Order! Order, I say! Oh, I mean, he's kind of thrown out and died. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty, yeah! Oh god, there's confetti. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this doesn't actually happen in the courtroom when it starts cheering like, yeah, he's innocent, woo! And with that, this court is adjourned. All right. I think we did it. Turns out that Frank Sort was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sort let himself, uh, let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sort grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. There you go, August 3rd, 2.32pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby number 2, again. Phew, I still can't believe we won! Right, good job in there. Congratulations! <laughs> Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. Well, I mean, besides the fact when I couldn't tell who the defendant was, and I got my claim wrong and was like, yeah, that's kind of all done. You know, a few issues, and also the last bit. But sure, yeah, let's say I fought my own battle, why not? It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. 
Oh, pardon me. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Oh god, I'm going for like a shaggy impression now. Larry? You're supposed to be happy, what's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me, I'll be dead and gone soon. G well, good. W wait, no, I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... <sighs> nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. H Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my tree. Oh no, I can... Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey! Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, <laughs> I made this clock for her. I made one for her, one for me. Really? You... you made this? Well, thank you. My keeper is a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And uh, she was just playing me for a fool. Don't make me when you want to cry. Don't I just make you want to cry? <laughs> Larry. Are you so sure? Uh, excuse me? <laughs> I think she fought quite a lot of you. In her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. <laughs> oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Uh, huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Um... Uh... <laughs> she had a passport, which means she must love you. Um... I, I mean, he made this, so maybe it's the statue? Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. <laughs> Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Oh, well, make a bit what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. <laughs> Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Ugh, right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him? Uh, yeah. A part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? The rich history. So, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And I promised to tell the chief about me and Larry. Would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Ah. The end. There you go, that's the whole game, everybody. Bish bash bosh, we finished it. <laughs> okay, up. Oh. So now I've got the second episode. Oh, hang on, I didn't start, did I? Save your progress at the point. Yes, please. And there. Boom. Okay, uh. Yep, save. Boom. Double save, just to be sure. Okay. Oh, I think it's gonna continue on. Okay, I'm gonna. Hang on. Ah! Shut up! But anyway, guys, that was the first episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this game. Um, the art style of it, the whole concept in itself being a sort of puzzle game that requires me to use my brain and stuff. You know, I'm always a big fan of those. When I can feel smart about it, I definitely feel positive or so. 
getting all the stuff right, it does a lot on the morale, and I think it's really, really charming. Now, that was only the first episode, and I've already found that one stupidly difficult for some reason. I think I made, like, two really big glowing mistakes in that, so... Considering that was probably the easiest of the point, I don't know how to feel about the rest of the game, but... We'll find out how it goes. I'm looking forward to playing the rest of this game soon. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to seeing it. Uh, do tell me in the comment section below how you feel about it and if you want me to keep doing it. I would love to keep doing this game because it just seems so charming and it lets me see more about Phoenix Rise as a character and become more, you know, acquainted with the series, which I would want to do. So, yeah. But till then, guys and girls, I hope you all enjoyed. I have been Chaos. You've been the episode one influence, as you always are. Until it's time, remember to do the usual. Uh, like you enjoyed the video, just like you did. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Maybe go follow me on Twitter for updates and stuff, because in case you do not know me by now, inconsistency is my quality. There's various links in the description below. My Twitter, as mentioned, my Twitch where I do streams, and my Patreon if you want to throw money at me for some benefits and stuff for some random reason. Most importantly, all things, guys, take care, everybody. Sayonara!